Uh, let me, uh, you know, also get in uh, Amit Bishra's uh, perspective now, real, real estate uh, sector expert who's also with us. Amit, uh, you know, as far as the real estate sector is concerned, uh, what are your uh, uh, expectations from what, uh, you know, the, 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 the companies are concerned, the, the corporates are concerned, and also as far as real estate uh, growth in the country is concerned, what would they expect today, uh, Amit, uh, from the budget? Also, as far as affordable housing goes as well because that has also been a big thrust area of the government. Do you believe outlays for that will perhaps be increased? Further goals will be laid out? What are you expecting today, Amit? Uh, thanks, Uday, and uh, welcome to our, our guests and uh, all the audience. So, uh, uh, coming to the expectation from the budget for the real estate sector, so uh, I'll uh, probably speak for both the perspectives as uh, the real estate sector as well as being a startup for ease of doing business for the startups. What are the expectations from our side? So, uh, real estate has been one of the backbone of the country uh, and it has been growing at a very fast pace for the last uh, few years. So, the expectation would be uh, that as of now, the developers who are doing the real estate development work, they do not get the benefit of GST input credit. So, one of the main expectation would be to overhaul the overall GST regime for the real estate sector so that uh, the developers also uh, get benefit of uh, GST input credit. This will not only uh, decrease the overall property prices in India, but also enable a lot of uh, uh, good practices in the downline uh, supply chain uh, in the real estate sector. So that would be one of the uh, expectation. And also uh, we've seen that when it comes to uh, lending by the financial institutions uh, for these developers, as well as the contractors who are uh, working in the real estate sector, then there is a huge need uh, for the government to incentivize these financial institutions so that they lend uh, to the real estate uh, sector players uh, in a much deeper way. Uh, coming to the ease of doing uh, business for the startups, so we all know that uh, for last one year, uh, the uh, startups have been struggling in raising investment while the public markets have been booming. And the main reason for the same uh, is that the capital ta gain, uh, gain tax regime is uh, very, very favorable for the listed companies as compared to unlisted startups. So there is a huge need for the finance minister to bring a overhaul of the capital ta gain tax uh, regime and bringing the same to the same level uh, for the startups as for the listed companies. And this will go a very, very long way uh, in enhancing the investment in a startup ecosystem. At the initial stages, any startup uh, needs to get the funds and uh, it is paramount uh, for the startup uh, ecosystem to boom. So that is one of the main uh, uh, requirement that I'll uh, say we have from the budget and uh, overall uh, regulatory framework uh, also needs to be uh, overhauled in a big way because if you see the uh, ranking of India in uh, ease of doing business, then it does not even feature into top 50 countries while it's the fifth largest economy. So uh, all the developed countries or the countries like Israel will, where the startup ecosystem has boomed and it has resulted in a lot of growth for those countries. Uh, we see that uh, the regulatory framework and the compliance requirements and everything is like very, very uh, favorable uh, for the uh, SMEs and for startups in those countries. So uh, although uh, the government has worked very, very hard in uh, increasing India's uh, ranking in ease of doing business, but still uh, there is a long way uh, to be done uh, in the particular sector. Uh, then, uh, uh, obviously, as uh, other guests have also been talking about, then upskilling and uh, developing the skills of the youth uh, is uh, paramount for Indian uh, uh, ecosystem to boom because the world is at the cusp of uh, AI revolution and uh, we'll see exponential growth and uh, AI uh, penetration in all the areas. Uh, it may be manufacturing, it may be construction, agriculture, services sector, everywhere we'll see that. Uh, there is a huge need to upskill India's uh, workforce. Uh, I was reading a report and uh, there was a requirement of upskilling around 1.6 crore workers uh, in India uh, for the AI and automation. So uh, we need to create a workforce which will probably change India's lab landscape and positioning in the world in the coming years. And uh, we hope that uh, the uh, in initiatives uh, taken uh, by the finance minister in the last few budgets like Pradhan Mantri, Kaushal Vikas Yojana, there will be more outlays uh, for those and uh, we'll uh, see India's youth upskilling uh, more in the uh, coming years. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.